All right, man, peace. I remember a few days ago when I first heard that Dwight Howard had been released by the Charlotte Hornets. I was thinking to myself, I wonder where he's going to land. I originally thought that he would be a possible acquisition of the Golden State Warriors because he would finally provide a lot of that defense in the middle that they had been lacking over the last few seasons. That's what I was thinking initially. And then it was brought to the fore that the Golden State Warriors decided to sign Mr. DeMarcus Cousins. And it made even more sense, number one, why they chose to let go of JaVale McGee and also why they chose to not sign Dwight Howard. It was very revelatory in light of a lot of information that has been brought to light about how the NBA views Dwight Howard as being a cancerous force in the locker room. If a team would rather sign a DeMarcus Cousins who himself has a rather bad reputation and is coming off of a torn Achilles, that they would choose to give him money over Dwight Howard, exactly how Dwight is perceived in NBA circles. And then, of course, beyond that, DeMarcus much more fits into the Golden State Warriors style of play. He can pass and he can shoot. Well, anyway, Stephen A. Smith is going to provide even more insight on the situation. So, of course, they're going to talk about it and I'm going to chime in. The Warriors add another piece. The rich just got richer. DeMarcus Cousin is a Golden State Warrior. There were teams with cap space frankly, who, who didn't want DeMarcus Cousins. DeMarcus Cousins now apparently a Golden State Warrior. You're looking for a reaction? No. Oh. Are you, are you being... I'm absolutely serious. Talk about the rich getting richer. If ever there was an upgrade, it's JaVale McGee the Boogie Cousins. Stephen A. Smith, brother, no disrespect, but you don't need to be doing any facial close-ups. I'm sorry. Please, wear a hat or something next time. Damn. I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. These cats got to turn everything into a damn gang sign. Stephen, I peeped you on the gram last night, that bi fight. All right, guys, Boogie Cousins agreeing to a one-year deal with the two-time defending champion Warriors in Vegas has taken note. Since this news came out, the Warriors now even heavier favorites. At four to seven, the Celtics fell from seven to two to nine to two. The Lakers fell from seven to two to five to one, and the Rockets fell from six to one to thirteen to two. Max, I tweeted last night. I feel like this is fantasy basketball for real, real life version. But do you think people are overreacting to Cousins agreeing with the Warriors? No, I don't think that they're overreacting at all. I don't see how it could be an overreaction when the fact of the matter is that you you had a team that was already the most talented team in the NBA. And they've added arguably the most skilled center in the NBA, albeit coming off of an Achilles injury. No, I mean, well, look, if people are thinking it's prime Boogie Cousins, as Stephen A. said off the top of the show, then yes. But I think there's a realization among basketball fans, not just casual fans, but basketball fans, that Boogie's caught coming off an injury. I mean, there's a reason you get him for $5.3 million and not $25.3 million a year, right? He doesn't have a, a max deal. And by the way, he'd like one. He's never gotten one yet. Well, to be quite frank with you, he's never deserved one. He has yet to show that he possesses the mental maturity that you would like a superstar player on your franchise to have before you invest a max salary with him. He was one of the most underpaid superstars in basketball, and he'll continue that way. So I think people understand you're not getting... Sometimes you can talk yourself out of good things in life. Not just money, but all other aspects of life, whether it be a great job, a great career, a great significant other. Sometimes you have to watch how you express yourself because you can alienate the things that you're trying to attract. But, again, if he gets back before the season's over, which is realistic, it's plausible that he does, given the timetable of this injury, and he gets into basketball shape, given the remainder of the regular season, which is also plausible, and he can give you 15, 18 minutes a night, then people, the Warriors are playing the death lineup, They're, but there's not small ball anymore. Everyone has small man skills, but two of them are seven feet tall. Max Kellerman, I don't even think that there is such a thing as small man skills anymore because everyone can do them now. Or were once known as small man skills with the ability to put the ball on the floor, to pull up from anywhere out on the floor from 15 feet to the three-point line, now you have centers who can face up, who can go in between the legs 5,000 times, who can pull up from 30. 
So you really don't have small man skills anymore. Now you just have skilled players. You're either skilled or you're not. The Warriors will have, will have one of the taller starting lineups in basketball and be able to play five out with KD. I think that at some point, teams are going to have to realize that in order to adapt to hopefully have any type of competitive advantage against a team as skilled as the Golden State Warriors, they're going to have to bring back the post-up game. They're going to have to bring back the mid-range, things that possibly could take some of the flow away from the Golden State offense. These are the things that, that some of the other teams in the NBA are going to have to embrace, that you just can't say we're going to go into a three-point shooting contest with them and beat them. They're going to have to bring back a little bit of 90s basketball, bump Golden State off of their cuts, be able to slow the game down, execute in a half-court set, get through the free-throw line, work from the inside out. That's how you beat them. You don't beat them by trying to outspeed them or outshoot them. It's like getting into the ring with a Muhammad Ali and saying, you know what, I'm going to outspeed him. No, Joe Frazier actually said, I'm going to crowd him. I'm going to try to take away his space, take away his speed. That's how you beat someone. You have to nullify their advantages, not try to do what they do except better. That almost never allows you to overcome an outstanding champion. AD at the three, Dre at the four, and Boogie at the five. So no, it's not an overreaction. The Warriors were already the best team in basketball, and they just likely got better. I think folks are overreacting, and I think they overreacted for a couple of reasons. Number one, <clears throat> first of all, again, I bring up the adjustment that Boogie Cousins has to make, not in this game, but in terms of his health and what have you. We don't know when he's going to be ready. You're right, Max. He could be ready in April, May, or June. We don't know. We'll find out. But number two, and more importantly, I'm not a person who just looks at the athleticism and the abilities of folks talent-wise. There's a reason certain guys are not invited in the locker room. There's a reason certain guys are not wanted on the team. For example, Max Kellerman, did you know that Dwight Howard wanted to be a Golden State Warriors? I happen to know that on very good authority. He would have. I'm sure that he did. That would have been a great way for him to end his career. He could have went there for two or three seasons, won a couple of championships, and then rode off into the sunset a first ballot Hall of Famer because he most likely would have possibly made an all-star game, maybe one, maybe even two, as a member of the Golden State Warriors, if he could have averaged, say, 12 or 13 rebounds, 13 points, and been dominant on the defensive end. They would have been calling it a renaissance for Dwight Howard. But because he has sown salt into the earth on so many different franchises, he's now become an anathema across the NBA. Nobody wants him. So now he has to settle for things. And it really started when he decided to play the passive-aggressive, quote-unquote, nice guy role near the end of his time in Orlando, which was the absolute wrong thing to do because his coach was Stan Van Gundy. And the Van Gundys are very straightforward dudes. If they feel like you're bullshitting them, they're going to out you to the media, especially if they believe, and accurately so, that you're trying to get them fired, which is pretty much what Dwight Howard was trying to do when he realized that he would not be able to get Stan Van Gundy fired. That's when he said, I'm leaving. That's when everything started to go downhill for Dwight Howard because it seems like ages ago, but at one time, Dwight Howard was viewed as one of the top three players in all of basketball. I would love to have been a Golden State Warrior. Guess what? They didn't want him. Why? Because Atlanta didn't want him in their locker room. Charlotte didn't want him in their locker room, etc. And he's got to really take a look in the mirror because there are teams talking about him and how he's having a cancerous effect on the locker room. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that they're saying that about him. Hey, brothers, you hear that? You know, sometimes you go through life and we can get into a bad space where we start to believe that people have it out against us. Well, I have news for you. When eight, nine, ten people are all saying the same thing about you, maybe it's you. Maybe it's something that you need to change. If ten, eleven people are saying something about you, of course you have to analyze the dynamics of each and every situation. Because it could be that a person is jealous of you. It could be that certain people have a certain level of disdain towards you because they feel like you've taken something from them. But either way, when 8, 9, 10 people are all saying the same exact thing about you, you have to analyze the reason why. Because you, me, or anyone else, we, we may need to make adjustments to our personalities, to who we are as people. When you constantly keep getting rejected, when people are constantly saying the same thing about you, and it's hampering you from getting what you want to get out of life. That's why I always state, when you hear so many of these liberal black females complaining about 
how difficult a time they're having finding a good man or how quote unquote black men don't want black women. No, it's not that. It's that so called black men and men of other races don't want you because you have a funky attitude. Oh, men don't want us because we're dark skinned. Your skin color has never stopped you or anyone else from getting a significant other. There are dark skinned black women that look like Mack trucks that have a man right now. It's a you issue. If we keep having the same problems popping up over and over and over again, sometimes it's us. Sometimes we have to self-reflect. Mr. Dwight Howard has to self-reflect. He has to analyze himself because in the business that he's in, he has to conduct himself a certain way. And that's why he's going to have to be very, very, very self-reflective because either he's going to have to change or maybe he's in the right. Maybe he's a good person. And the overall culture of the NBA is not a place that he should be involving himself in. Sometimes you can be at a job that's just not for you. The people there are not of your caliber. They're not on the same wavelength as you. They're all saying the same things about you. It might not be because you're a bad person. It might just be because you're in the wrong environment for you. Either way, Dwight Howard is going to have to make a change very, very quickly. And he needs to pay attention to that because he's built, he has built that reputation for himself. And my, how Superman has fallen. The guy that used to wear the Superman cape is kryptonite now all over the damn place. Because nobody wants Dwight Howard right now. <laughs> yes, because he decided that he wanted to be the nice guy. Brothers, never worry about being a nice guy. Always be the real guy. And be the real guy from jump. So that you don't have to worry about anyone claiming that you attempted to misrepresent yourself that you connived, that you utilized chicanery or skullduggery to get your way. Just be who you really are. Get to the point. And when you come across these people, whether it's a significant other or a so-called friend, try to get to the point of who they are as quickly as possible as well to save yourself time and aggravation. That's what life is about. Just figuring out these various conundrums and enigmas that present themselves to us every day. And it's much easier in life to be real as opposed to being a fake nice guy. Because when and if you decide to be a fake nice guy, the person or people that you're trying to be fake with are only going to come back at you with even more vitriol because they thought that you were somebody that you were not. That's something to take into consideration. They were willing to take a chance on Billy Boogie Cousins because the money worked, because he was a pillar of the community just an hour and 15 minutes away in Sacramento, because you never know what he can do for you from a talent perspective. But we also got to take into account the fact that are there enough balls? That's number one. Number two, does it in any way compromise what you want to do at certain intervals? If indeed the potential is there, what's going to happen when those kind of things rear its ugly head? There's a way to go about messing with people when you're on the basketball court I know the player and I won't tell you who Max Kellerman but you had guys back in the day when he was on the court he was so ferocious defensively that folks were trying to figure out how to get at him Stephen A. Smith let's be for real you're talking about Dennis Rodman who else could you be talking about who was playing that ferociously quote unquote back in the day when you say back in the day you're talking about the 80s into the 90s and what they were doing with whispering stuff in his ear that ain't meant to be repeated over FCC airways, not to mention the fact that it's his personal business. And that even more confirms that you're talking about Dennis Rodman because we all know that Dennis Rodman's wife was sleeping with half the damn NBA, allegedly. Allegedly. So when you combine the fact that you stated that this person was a ferocious defender, as well as the fact that his opponents were trying to find a way to dim his ferocity on defense, and they were using a lot of personal information against him. Who else could you be talking about but Dennis Rodman? Once again, brothers, you never, ever, ever fall in love with a woman. Had it not been for basketball, Dennis Rodman would have committed suicide because of what happened to him after he fell in love with that woman. You love your woman. You never, ever, ever in life fall in love with a woman, especially, particularly in this society, where the woman can do whatever she feels whenever she feels. Never, ever, ever do that. And it rattled this guy so much it messed with his head and disintegrated their potential on the basketball court. So in other words, Stephen A. Smith, your buddy Isaiah Thomas got you on the phone and was talking about Dennis Rodman because Isaiah Thomas loves to blame Dennis Rodman's disintegration into quote-unquote insanity on his tenure with the Chicago Bulls. When in reality it started 
with the Detroit Pistons because their handler, Chuck Daly, was the person who controlled Rodman. Rodman actually conformed to the belief that they were in a family atmosphere, that, that the team was a family atmosphere because he'd never had a real family before. He had those Caucasians that he used to summer with, I believe in Nebraska or Oklahoma, wherever the hell they were. But his real family was in shambles. His mother was verbally and emotionally abusive. So when he got drafted by the Pistons, that was the first time in his life that he was ever in a real quote-unquote family atmosphere. But he realized the lack of substance, that notion of a sports team being an actual family really was when Chuck Daly up and left the Detroit Pistons and he was left there with nothing basically. That's when he started to get all the tats and dye his hair and the issue with his wife allegedly sleeping with some of his teammates and then with other players across the NBA. It almost led to him having a mental breakdown that he never came back from. All that glitters ain't gold, baby. The bottom line is your abilities and your talents are one thing. What you got up here matters and how it meshes with those guys matter. There's a way to get at people. And I would say don't rule out other teams coming at you and figuring a way to mess with you. All of these things are relevant. In other words, Stephen A. Smith, you know some things about Boogie Cousins that you're not letting on. And you're saying that these can be used as, no pun intended, an Achilles heel against the Golden State Warriors when it really matters. That's basically what you're saying. Stephen A. Smith knows a lot about some of the things that occur across the NBA, the underbelly of the NBA, but he, of course, cannot put that out on television. Stephen A., I gotta, I gotta counter that, though. Won't he be so motivated? Don't you expect more of him? People doubted him. He didn't get the contracts he wanted. He's coming off injury. We already know there's questions about his attitude. Don't you think you could potentially see a new boogie out there? Well, you're certainly going to see a very focused DeMarcus Boogie Cousins, but when you talk about what his potential is, his potential is going to be restrained by what he's allowed to do in their offense. This is not going to be like how he was in Sacramento where he had the green light. He has to play within the framework of the team. And if he deviates away from that or he shows that he has an ulterior motive to up his financial value across the NBA, they will cut him because they're looking at championship or bust on that team. Well, there's the potential for that, but I don't think that was the case. I think if he were healthy, there would not have been a, a, a shortage of calls. Let's be real about something here. This is a career 21 and 11 player. This is a dude that averaged 25 and 13 on the court with Anthony Davis. This is a dude universally recognized as one of, or arguably, the best big man in basketball. He's that big time when healthy. Boogie Cousins is smart enough and wise enough to know the only reason he didn't get calls was because people know he's coming off that Achilles injury. It no, sir. The only reason why he didn't get calls was because he had an Achilles injury and he's pretty much seen as a headache all across the NBA. But he's far more talented and his offensive skills have a far greater level of diversity than a Dwight Howard. That's the reason why he was a better fit for the Golden State Warriors than Dwight Howard was. If Boogie Cousins Stephen was healthy, there would have been a slew of phone yeah. calls, and if there wouldn't have been calls, it's because the New Orleans Pelicans would have offered him a boatload of money. That's the truth. There aren't that many players actually worth a max deal. Right. Boogie Cousins might be one of them. He that's might right. be. You might be able to... Well, that's pretty much it on that. I just wanted to cover some of the Stephen A. Smith sentiment pertaining to Dwight Howard and also delve into his allusion to who I believe to be Dennis Rodman. I don't see it being anyone else. So we've covered that already, and we've already gone over the DeMarcus Cousins angle. So peace.